Well, a very, very, very warm welcome to today's episode of The Goldman. We're extremely excited just to bring this show to you. As always, we want to keep reminding you that inside of every single one of us is great gold. It's a battle of greatness and it is worth fighting for. It is one of those that you cannot quit on. We're coming to you straight from the Highlands uh, suits right up in Kilimani. And we have an amazing, amazing show, man. I dare say the gold mine is only getting better. It's getting bigger. It's getting stronger. You might as well want to follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, as well as on Instagram on The Gold Mine Show. Today's guest probably needs very little introduction, man. You certainly do know her. You probably have listened to her. An amazing, amazing guest that I'm extremely, extremely excited just to host none other than Olive Gashawa. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Olive. Good to see you, too. And thank you so much for coming. No, thank you for having me. Well, you see, when I was looking forward to this show, I said to myself, man, if I can have Olive, then I think we are making good progress. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, no, I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. You know, when, when someone like Dennis calls you, you don't say no or I'm busy. <laughs> so when he calls you, you show up. So Being too nice, man, and thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much, so much. Look, Olive, you have an amazing journey. And, and, and today we just want to just dig in. Okay. into this journey. When I think about great entrepreneurs, I, your name comes to mind. When I think about great image consultants, your name comes to mind. When I think about angel investors as well, your name suddenly comes to mind. And I just want us to take it back. Uh -huh. Where did all these entrepreneurship thing? <laughs> <laughs> Where did it come from and where did it begin? Uh, you know, I'm always asked that question. Yes. And I don't think it began somewhere specific or intentionally. Right. Um, I started my first business when I was 19, which was 19. a modeling agency. Right. Yes. And at that time, it was really just for, just for fun because when you're young, you have a lot of free time. Right. Uh, between high school and university, and right. you're trying to figure out what to do with yourself. Correct. So I started the modeling agency to keep me busy, to keep me out of trouble, right. to make some extra money on the side. A lot of 19-year-olds don't think it that way. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of 19-year-olds don't think it that way. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, so so probably then there must have been an upbringing also. Maybe that helped you to discover self? Um, I think, okay, first of all, my parents are both doctors. Right. So um, in that sense, entrepreneurship was not really a conversation in the home. I actually wanted to be a doctor. Right. Um, all through my childhood because right. my siblings, I'm the last one, by the way. Okay. My siblings, one became an aeronautical engineer, the other two became lawyers, so I was the designated doctor of the family. To take after daddy and mommy as Exactly. Well. <laughs> yes. And then halfway, once you, after university, I mean, after high school, then yep. you start taking higher sciences and you're looking at your future. I was like, maybe this medicine thing is not what I'm meant to be doing. Right. And as I was trying to figure that out, yep. I took a year out. Right. And I had the luck when my mother told me, you know what, you, you do what you want to do. Right. Because you don't have to do medicine and then you're not happy. And can you imagine if I did medicine, I would have just finished studying. No, like, your mother, your mother must, must, she must be a plot. A lot of parents want you to do what they get. I know. And they, they do. barely give you the space to discover yourself. They do. So she was a bit more open-minded, right. which I think was a good thing. Yep. Um, in fact, now later, after the fact, she was telling me how when I got into modeling and fashion, right. a lot of people are thinking, Oi. <laughs> I'm a Gashara. I'm a Potolea. Kabisa. So I have a in a model. Right. Because of this modeling right. could have had all sorts of connotations. And you wouldn't see a future in it. Exactly. But I think it was also a very bold one for you because then when you say your brother is an aeronautic engineer, mm -hmm. uh, the other one is a lawyer, mm -hmm. then you put model in between <laughs> the parents are uh, doctors in there. I know. <laughs> it must have been a bold one for you. It was meant to have been a temporary decision. Correct. It was eight, when you're 19, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. still trying to discover. And it was good in the sense that it kept me out of trouble, right. kept me busy, kept right. me working. Right. You know, other 19-year-olds, right. that's when they're discovering the party life, that's when they're discovering Absolutely. all these other things. Yeah. So that's what 19-year-olds would do. Yes, right. exactly. Right. So um, it kept me busy. It made some money in the process as well. And I think when you start running a business, you really have to build your own self-discipline. Correct. You have to read a lot. Right. You have to... Because I'd not gotten to university yet, so yep. I was self-educating. Right. And using my time really well. Right. And because I was still living at home, of course. Yep. I'm sure my mother could see the difference. And she's like, okay, this one is giving her structure. All right. So right. let's see where it goes. Right. Then eventually I ended up And what was that business at 19? What, what, it was what a modeling it? agency. It's a modeling agency. Yeah, it was a modeling All right. Agency. So tell us about that. Um, well, I started... I did Miss Malaika. Mm-hmm. 
just after high school, then that got me into the modeling space. Mm. Um, and within that modeling space, I realized there was no one who was doing fashion models. Right. There was no one who was focusing on that. All the agencies, all the agencies that were there were casting agencies. Right. So started um, Kinky Modeling and Talent Agency mm -hmm. with the goal of focusing on fashion, um, focusing on other creative aspects that are not really being promoted um, in the space. Correct. So that's that's how I got into that. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. And yes. then it kicked off. Yes, then it kicked off. Mm -hmm. uh, we started doing lots of corporate events. Mm. Um, I think I was one of the first people to do a fashion show within a corporate event, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Then it became a thing. Yep. We'd give out, we'd, um, give out models as hostesses for events. I'm imagining a CEO back then saying we are doing a, a fashion uh, model. I know. <laughs> and then they call, you, they call you in to come and pitch. Then the agency is called Kinky Models. Right. And then they would always be like, and awkward, you know, people are giggling, and then some people are like, so the models, are they, you know, so it was a good icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> completely uncharted waters at the time, I would imagine. Yes, completely. Yep. Um, and again, it wasn't, I was just sort of doing it for fun. Right. But then as, it, as I realized this can actually be a thing, Right. I then decided to do entrepreneurship as a course. Correct. Um, in university. Right. So I went to, what to, it was called Swiss Management Academy. Mm -hmm to do entrepreneurship mm -hmm. or to do um, business with entrepreneurship as a major. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was the only university in Kenya that was offering entrepreneurship as a major or as mm -hmm. a course. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else was um, either doing accounting, you're doing finance, mm -hmm. you're doing a straight line, you're right. doing sales and marketing, right. you're doing one of those. Right. So, so by this time, you've already started deciding, I want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, so I like this Because by the time you're investing thing. in education and entrepreneurship. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember, um, I don't think Chris Kirubi remembers this, but... He told me one thing that when I was still trying to figure out what I want to do, I was like, oh, maybe I should do sales and marketing. Yep. Or maybe I should do um, hotel management even crossed my mind because it looked good. So I was literally, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Yep. And then he said, just do business because right. um, when you do business, then right. you can start any business you want. Correct. It's more broad. Right. If you go and do Opens something your like up. hotel management, you can only work in hotels. Correct. If you go and do sales and marketing, right. You can only be in the sales space, not necessarily, but it sort of closes you into right. that a specific industry. Exactly. So right. it's like just do business as you figure out what you want to do. Because Good you advice from uh, CK. I don't know if he remembers, but yeah, he was advising. Well, I hope you'll get to watch this and get to know here. I know. He was advising <laughs> right. 19 year old Olive until today. Whenever he sees me, I don't think he's like, where are my models? I'm like, Chris, I stopped doing the modeling thing like five years ago. Can you focus? But he still remembers again. Like, uh, still remembers. Right, yes, yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Cool. So you then went into do entrepreneurship in school. Yeah, so I did right. entrepreneurship. And the good thing about I did it as an executive bachelor's. Right. So first of all, I was the youngest in the class because mm -hmm. executive bachelor's are evening classes mm -hmm. type things for right. executive people right. who are working. Right. But it was great in that you learn something and you're able to also implement it into your business almost immediately. Correct. And I did try to put in some sort of structures mm. with Kinky Models, but not too many. Right. Um, with the second business, now I was able to start it now properly because right. now you're not doing guesswork. You Correct. Know, You've the, just been educated on this matter exactly. and sharpened With the agency, right. you, it was all guesswork and you're sort of <laughs> building it as you go. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. So then um, it moved from being just model and then you started uh, doing stuff to do with um, image consulting as well. Yes. So within the agency, uh, we would produce fashion shows. Right. Then that got me into magazines. Right. Where we started styling, sort of offering packages. So we'd work with the magazine, style the models, mm. um, do the photo shoots, mm. provide. So mm. we'd sort of do an entire fashion spread right. or fashion right. segment. Right. And as that was going on, I kept thinking long term because I'm always like, you know, what's what's the long term plan yeah, here? Yeah. Um, will I be styling magazines for the rest of my life? Will right. I, you know, what's what's the plan, right. Olive? Right. So I discovered image consultancy, and that's an important one when you talk about long term because I think a lot of times we get into entrepreneurship, but have a very short term view. Yes. And we are fighting fires the entire time without exactly. really a proper plan yeah. of where we want to go. Mm. So then you started looking at it from a long term perspective. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. because you know also. Keeping in mind, you know, when you are when you do something like medicine, you're right. a doctor. That's right. your long-term goal. Yeah. You'll be doing... Doctor for life. Exactly. <laughs> right. So now in entrepreneurship or in business, you're like, what's, what's that long-term goal? Or what's right. that business that I'm going to start that becomes either your legacy business or the business that you'll do when you're 60? Right. And I knew for a fact I'll not be chasing models or styling people when I'm even 40. So I was yeah. like... So what it has next? a window period. It does. It really does. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we are still doing it though. Yeah. Um, but then in, in different ways. Right. So I discovered image consultancy and why it drew me is because it fed off what I'd already done. 
Um, and I was also thinking long-term plan in terms of skill set. What's going to be that one thing that sets me apart from right. everybody else? Right. Because everybody can, anyone can be a business person, right? Right. right. So in, with Image Consultancy, it fed on what I'd been doing in the fashion space, yep. but took it now, sort of made it a bit more, for lack of a better word, or not to sound condescending, serious. Yeah. yeah. Right? Especially and, and in I'm Africa. curious, at what age are you in at this point? I mean, you, you started the, the, the previous one at 19. So at this point so now is 23, 24. This is 23, 24 thinking in that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 23, 24 thinking long term. Yes. And when I know. get to 40, I don't want to do this. I want to do it differently. Yeah, you want to be able to do it differently. Exactly. Um, yeah. This is too impressive, uh, Olive. <laughs> it is too impressive. <laughs> I I, I, I'm actually tempted to ask, did your parents do medicine in as private practice or? Um, so my father, rest his soul, did have a clinic. He had yes. a clinic in Westlands. Right. Um, and at that time, we were in consolata. So I remember I used to go from school, go chill at the clinic until he's done with work and then we go home together right and then my mother worked for government for quite a bit right. so she did my, my dad was a gp my mother is a gynecologist right um so she worked um for about 20 30 years in hospital right in fact i remember at some point i think she's she delivered a lot of people our age <laughs> <laughs> so you know right. can you imagine a guy is coming to try and hit on you he's like you know i delivered you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so then she went into consultancy. Right. So she started at the UN, at UNFPA, right. as a gynecologist of family planning. Correct. So Correct. she sort of went into that direction, worked right. with UNAIDS, right. worked, not UNAIDS, to, I can't remember what it was called. Because anyway. I'm trying to f connect the dots. Who, who mentored a 23-year-old to think the way this 23-year-old is thinking of like at, 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 at such a young age? Reading books. Um, and also, you know, when you're in, in the consultancy space, which is... Uh, where my mother was, you, you run projects and projects around like businesses anyway. Right, right. So, and I think also looking at her and looking at her career trajectory, right. it's like, okay, so, you know, at least she wasn't delivered until she was in her 60s. She yes. was able to now move from the hospital into other things to right. put in her own skill set. Right. So, yeah, long-term plan, found out about Image Consultancy, right. went and studied that. It's right. a specialized certificate course, so I, I traveled to Singapore to do that. Right. And then came back and started the Image Consultancy. This is a 23, 24 year old, all the way in Singapore, just to learn this new thing again. Yes, exactly. My mother thought I was mad. I never told her I'll pay for the course, it's fine. Just buy me a ticket. Like, let's just simplify things. Because <laughs> it was a ridiculously expensive course. Right. I think it was like $25,000. It was madness. I literally thought I was mad. I was like, no, it's a business investment. Because right. I'll come back and start a business and... In this line? Yeah, in this line. So but it's, it's a discussion that has not been held before either. Um, it had been held for a while. You right. know, you ease into things. Yes. Also, you know, you have to learn how to... You drop ideas, right. you drop hints. You have that no, but I'm saying uh, image consultancy oh, yes. as a practice was not a practice we knew back then. No, it wasn't. Um, and even when I came back, you're telling... Can you imagine I'm coming to your HR and saying, I'm going to teach people how to dress, how to sit, how to stand. And they're like... How, what's the return of investment on that? Yeah, how yeah. will we make more money how do we if people yes. sit better? Right. Does it really affect the bottom right. line? And right. I'm like, actually it does. Yes. You'll be surprised. So, and that's why I thought it was important to take the course. Right. Um, I remember I was being trained, at that time I was 25. Right. And I remember one of my key trainers um, is a practicing image consultant in London. Mm -hmm. And she was, I think, 60. She looks like 60, look 65 there. So I was right. like, okay. Uh, maybe I've chosen the right thing here. <laughs> if and they've done it celebrating... all the way to 65, it must, there must be something right about exactly. it. Exactly. And she's actually celebrating 25 years of her business. Right. So that was sort of a good thing. Mm -hmm. Coming back, of course, it, had, it was uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. So I had to literally... I think I was one of the people who single-handedly made image consultancy a thing in this country. Right. Right. You right. know, right. Um, I used my connections in media to do all sorts of interviews. Mm. I got on to Slim Possible. Remember mm. Slim Possible? Yeah, the show? Betty. Uh, what's her name? Um, Lillian Bully. Yes. Right. So I got on to Slim Possible right. and I was helping as people are losing weight, how do they now start dressing for their body shape? Correct. People Correct. are like, oh, this image consultancy thing is actually a thing. You actually worked for that show as well? Yes, I was the resident oh. image consultant. Nice. All right. Um, and then I would hold open workshops mm -hmm. where people pay like 5K to attend. Right. But then I would come and maybe talk to different HR uh, managers or directors and say, you know, come for free. Right. Um, experience the course. Correct. Listen to the content. Right. And then see if it's something that will add value to right. the organization. Right. And slowly, then they started, people started seeing the difference. Right. Um, it started being accepted. Right. And now here we are eight, nine years later. Into the practice. Yeah. And how's that come on? 
I mean, it's coming great. Right. Uh, we've done a couple of great projects. We, I work a lot with banks, right. a lot with insurance companies. Right. Um, media houses a lot at the beginning of mm. the of my career, not so much now. Right. So I think corporates are beginning to understand the value of it. Right. We also do work with individuals to help them develop their personal brands. Correct. So like for example, you can be here and say, Olive, now as Dennis Jao, how do I I need some myself? help with this one. Yes. Exactly. Right. So personal branding has become a big conversation. Correct. Because we help people position themselves um, within their particular in industries or their right. particular fields. Right. Um, in the corporate space, the focus is on soft skills. Right. And now, especially as business becomes more and more competitive, mm. literally how you communicate mm. will set people apart. Mm. Um, I like to say, if you look at banking, for example, we are all selling the same products. Mm. Every bank has the exact right. same. They have different right. names, yeah. they have different looks and feels, but yeah. ultimately it's the same thing. Right. So. People now don't buy into products anymore. People buy into people. Correct. You'll buy that product from company X as opposed to company Y because of the salesperson that sold Correct. it to you. Correct. Um, so one of our biggest costs is actually called soft and skills. And it's an and important sales. realization because and I think a lot of times we just think it's it's a generic sale. Yeah. And it probably is not. I mean, people buy into people, yeah, people before into they people. even buy the exactly. product. Exactly. Correct. Um, and even if you look at the most successful salespeople, right. they tend to be the most charismatic, right. the most energetic. Right. Right. Because right. They inter the way they interact with people is much different. It's right. very, very different. Right. So, um, yeah, so soft skills. And so selling is not just selling. I mean, there's a science behind it. There is a science to it. And there's and a packaging behind it as well. The packaging behind it is what we focus on. Right. Because I think a lot of the sales training that people do is about the science and the psychology of sales. Correct. But people forget about interpersonal psychology right. and how people connect and how people relate to each other. Right. Um, and so that's what we do in yep. image consultancy. Right. Um, right. More on the communication skills. Yep. And then how do you dress? How do you present yourself? Correct. Do you look serious? Do you look trustworthy? Um, I remember someone asking me, it was like, you know, we were training sales agents. And they're right. like, but Olive, this is to end up with Yes. Now you want me, first of all, when you go in a suit, yeah. they think we are carry agents. So first of all, <laughs> so they will run away. Pass. Shops close even. <laughs> Let's even stand there. So right. now you're saying now we should be in a full suit, right. going downtown to sell to these guys, right. or going to the hood to sell. They'll not take us seriously. Correct. And I told them, it's very simple. Um, you're selling a financial product. Right. I will buy a financial product from a guy who looks like he has his stuff together. I mean, he's got to look like uh, we yeah, can trust him with to, our money as exactly. well. Exactly. So you need to look like money for right. us to trust with their money. And so right. slowly they're like, okay. Mm. Okay, we see it. Yep. We see it. Right. So it's been it's been an interesting journey. So then you you must have been able to assist different people in the different context of where they are selling to and what their markets look like and therefore yes. position themselves to those respective markets. Yes, it's not a one size fits. Yes, yeah, uh, not fits a one all. size fits all. And you know that's just for salespeople. We still you know we still work a lot with executive committees. Right. So you're working with an exco of um, a certain organization. Saying, right. Okay, only come and train the board. Correct. Come and train our directors or right. our managers. Right. Um, because a lot of times, especially at the executive level, they become visual representations of the brand. Of the organization. Right. Of the organization. Wherever they are, they carry the brand of the organization. Exactly. Right. So they need. They're aware, but sometimes. People don't necessarily always know what to do. Right. We assume people a lot. I have good intentions, but I'm not skilled to do this. Exactly. Right. Um, there was a time we were doing something as simple as dining etiquette. Right. And we had managers. Eh, the friend, fuck the and the nice <laughs> situation. I think sometimes can be drama. <laughs> <laughs> Until I realized by the way, this thing is not, it's not common knowledge. No, it is not. It's really not. And then you're looking at like, this guy's a manager. He literally doesn't know how to use a fork and a knife. No, Olive, where I grew up, man, I think uh, how we were doing this stuff, man. See, it's and then Olive, they, they start it telling it. you, they're like, well, then, oh, now Olive, now seriously. <laughs> you know? So those things, so right. even managers, it's important for cool. them to sort of be polished and to be brought up. And so it's in the midst of all of that yep. that I then started the magazine, which is Couture Africa. And, and maybe just before you go to my, you, you make that last point, it's a very important point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot give, give, keep giving excuses of this is how I was brought up. Yeah. And therefore, I'm not able to then fit into this arena. Yes. I've got to invest in myself for the new space that yes, I'm also do. in. Yeah, you do. And it's a conscious effort. It is. And if you even look at the people who continue to rise in rank, it's right. the people who are investing in themselves. Correct. People who are taking training seriously. Right. Um, on a personal level or on, on an individual level, even for entrepreneurs and business owners, mm. it's the guys who intentionally choose to better themselves Correct. who are able to better their businesses. Right. Um, and I like to ask the difference between, let's say, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. Correct. Because that entrepreneur just wants to make cash. Let's just make the money. It's like it's not complicated. Right. I don't want to change the world. Right. I just want to right. make cash. Right. But entrepreneurs and yep. intentional entrepreneurs, the right. ones who grow are the ones who spend a lot of time developing themselves. Correct. Um, I remember not too long ago, I think it was two years ago, I was at Strathmore. Right. Oh, last year. Mm -hmm. I was doing, I've done two courses. I was doing the owner-manager program. Right. And one person is like, 
But why? why, why you're fine. Right. See, why are you so you're medical? You're fine, yes. Listen, this is the problem. Yeah. The day you decide you're fika and yes. you don't need more education, that's, it. that's the beginning of your downfall. Right. So you always need to continue learning, continue going for courses, because you never know what you'll pick up. Right. Um, and you can just, even if it's just one thing that you pick up that yep. helps you run your business better, right. then it's worth it. And You've got to keep at it. You have to keep at it. And you have to keep developing right. yourself. Right, right. Um, so I've become a big personal development, personal right. and professional development advocate. Correct. Because it literally helps, even within your organization, mm. it helps teams grow mm. because they learn to communicate with each other better. Mm. Yeah. You know, when you're well-dressed, mm. you carry yourself with more confidence. Mm. You're, you sort of feel yourself a bit right. more, which I think right. is really important. Right, yeah. right. Uh, and, and thanks, thanks for just me, uh, taking some time on that. Because sometimes I think we, we, we get casual, if I may use that term, yes. and, and, and assume, after all, we all know where I came from, you know, mm. you know, and we don't then take the ownership yeah. of just building, and, and, and you make an important point. Sometimes the difference between the guys growing and the guys staying at the same point might be a question of how much investment yes, they're, they putting are, they're putting in themselves. themselves. And you'll also find, like, on my way here, someone told me, Olive, can you put together a train, a training on, on Zoom etiquette? Because guys are coming on to calls in T-shirts. <laughs> guys are, you know, the screen is looking upwards. Right. Uh, you know, right. like, that's just another thing. Correct. And you can tell, even on Zoom calls, you right. can tell the level of seriousness based on how prepared someone is right. on what their screen looks like. Correct. Does that make Correct. sense? Correct, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. it's about, for me, in the image consultancy space, it's about really creating more awareness, yes. making people more intentional right. about what they do, how they do it, and how they carry themselves. Excellent. Yeah. So this morphed into couture. Sort of ish morphed. Right. So I say um, consultants write books. <laughs> I started a magazine. Right. Because <laughs> again, it's still around the same lines, around Correct. fashion. And I guess because I still did have my roots with the agency and with the fashion styling and with media. Mm. Um, see, when you're not training, you also still have quite a bit of downtime. And mm. that's why you find consultants write books because you can only pitch to a company so many times. Right. So now when you're not busy training, you're either developing more pro programs or creating content around the programs Correct. that you have. Correct. Correct. So I decided to do Couture Africa magazine. Right. Because right. again, I think media is power. Right. So when you have a channel that to communicate, mm. then what you choose to communicate can always change day by day. So right. that's how Couture Africa was born. Right. And I think it's it's doing quite well. It's grown much right. bigger and much faster than I intended. Yep. So, yep. you know, yep. thank God. Yep. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Now, um, there is a side of you that is mm -hmm. an angel investor. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I want to just interrogate that a bit because um, there are many people probably watching you right now and they say, I would want to start business X and I would want to start business Y, but I think I need someone who can support me uh, either from a funding perspective or whichever the perspective. As an angel investor, one, I want to know what took you there, but two, the mindset of an angel investor that is able to then say to all of you seeking to invest, mm. this is part of what makes you attractive. Mm -hmm. to someone to want to invest in okay. your business and help you grow. Yeah. Yep. Um, so the angel investment part of it was led by two things. Yep. Because first you find there's a lot of people who need small amounts of just kidogo money. They don't need yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then there's no one who's sort of filling that gap. Correct. You know, when you go to the bank, <laughs> see now banks, bless them, but sometimes, you know, they, they say, come and do this. It's easy, two days. But then we took our ground in the difference. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't just say that, but, but yes, go Once ahead. Once you get there, it's a whole other story. Right. And so, for example, with Couture Africa, we got funding to start it. Right. And even just the process of doing that um, taught me a lot right. in, in, in terms of how we structure the business and how we, how we're able to position it. Right. And I realized the reason a lot of SMEs or small entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are not able to even interact with banks mm. is because they're very casual in how they do their accounting and their finances. Right. So for me, it's not even so much about the angel investment part of it. Right. It's really more about the mentorship and the guidance right. on how we can help these businesses become more formalized. Right. How can you be able to position them such that by the time you need money, you can actually access funds? Right. Because you'll find sometimes someone needs capital, yes. Sometimes they need invoice discounting, mm. which they still can't get. Mm. Um, sometimes they need cash flow financing. Mm. So there's different types of money that, they require. that businesses require at any right. one time. Right. But because there's no formal accounting structure, mm. they're not looking at their businesses from outside right. properly. They're not, they always think that they need to raise money. Correct. Which is not always the case. Right. So what I like to do, or what I focus a lot of my time on, even um, is not so much on the investment part, it's mm -hmm. on sitting with that guy or that lady mm -hmm. and helping them structure their business mm -hmm. and helping them figure out what type of financing they need to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So for example, we've just built an accounting app. Right. Um, 
I think right now it's on the Play Store mm -hmm. called Edge Finance, right. which is like a QuickBooks for dummies on phone. Mm -hmm. So at, at least you can start logging in your expenditure, your spend. So that by the time you're looking for invest, for you're building a record already. Exactly. Right. I like to use the example of your mamamboga. These guys who full, not full is who take your emshwaris right. in the morning and right. pay it back in the evening. In the evening, yeah. If that woman had an account of how much money she spends, she look at her different her business completely different. Very different. Yeah. So for example, yeah. you borrow a thousand bob in the morning. Right. Uh, you go buy your fruits and vegetables, whatever it is, you sell them. You make 2,000 shillings, mm. you pay back the 1,000. Mm. The 1,000 you use to buy food for the house, tomorrow mm. you do the same thing again. Mm. And you keep doing it over and over and over again. Mm. Mm. But then if you tabulate it, mm. you're making 2,000 shillings a day. Mm. If you put that together and if you put it on a spreadsheet, you've actually made 60,000 shillings a, a month. month. Right. That's even more than what a teacher gets paid. Correct. But then because you, you have not been enabled to look at your business And we hardly look way. at it that way, by the way. Exactly. We You're thinking, yes. ah, me, me, I'm just like a small business person. Yeah, I just stay yeah, yeah. in a person. Right, but right. then if you look at it in its totality, right. I'm like, you're actually making a lot of money. Correct. You're bankable. Correct. You know, if Correct. you go to equity tomorrow, they can be able to give you money to Absolutely. buy some, something Absolutely. substantial. Absolutely. But Absolutely. because they're just on mobile money right. and they're not putting accounts on, on it, right. then they're not able to see just how much they can grow. And you're helping a lot of them then begin to put that into context. Exactly. So it's being able to try and formalize it a bit more. Um, being able to separate your business and your home. Right. You know, if you're being paid through M-Pesa, right. the, what then the normal business person, will, the normal entrepreneur or hasslepreneur mm. will do is mm. they'll use that cash that they've received mm. to go and buy food for the house, to go right. and pay rent. Right. So there's no line right. that's distinctive. Right. So they can see this is how much money your business has right. made. Right. So this is how much money your business has made. These are your financial needs. Correct. Now, do you need an investor? Right. Do you need financing from the bank? Right. Do you need invoice discounted? Right. What do you need? Right. Because now you've been able to package it and put it together. So there's a bit of helping them to package. Yeah. But there's a bit of you that is also looks at, as, at it from an investor perspective. So from an investor's eye, what do you guys look for? Um, so first of all, you look for that structure. So you help them to build the structure. Um, and right. also looking for growth. Right. Because a lot of entrepreneurs are or a lot of businesses are dependent on the entrepreneur. Right. right. Right? And, you know, even me, I've been asked many times, Oli, if you get hit by a bus tomorrow, what, what happens, happens to your coaching? business? Right. Right? Yes. So, and I'll tell you for free, yeah. um, even when I was setting up the businesses, and I'm very aware, and yep. that's why I rebranded the consultancy firm. Yep. yep. So, IW was previously called Image with Olive, right? Yes. And without Olive, it doesn't exist. Right. But then when I was setting up Couture, I was very intentional to make sure I remove myself from the business. You delink it from Olive. Exactly. Correct. Such that if tomorrow I decide I'm tired of doing this magazine, it can still continue. As an, as an uh, entity, yes. going concern. Exactly. Right. So if you have a business that cannot continue without you, it's unlikely you'll get anyone investing in it. Right. Because what happens when you get bored? What happens when something happens to you? You right. know, God forbid, knock right. on wood. Right. So you, first, can it survive without you? Yep. Um, and then second, are you looking for growth or for scale? Mm. Or is it just, are you just trying to pay your rent right. at the end of the month? Right. Again, 80% of business people are just trying to pay their rent at the end of the right. month. And if they don't pay their rent doing this, they'll go and start doing that. Correct. So, for example, um, you know, so we, all, we all know the quail legs analogy. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> this guy starts making money selling quail legs, yeah. and then everyone starts selling quail legs, and then it's all over the, the place. The market dead. dips, right. Exactly. Right. So, then our guys are looking for the next thing. Right. So, entrepreneurship, I know it comes to your. Uh, the, the phrase that you really like, the woodpecker. And, and the, you're going to go the there in the show. <laughs> so entrepreneurship is really about, is that the business you want to do? And if it is, are you growing it to scale? Mm. Even if you look at the crew that's right. here, right? right. Um, right. So it's a, probably a production company. Right. And I'm sure the guy that started they this production... They call Articulate Media. Articulate Media. Articulate Media. They do an amazing job, by the way. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the owner of Articulate Media started as either the camera guy right. or the sound right. guy right. or the right. photographer. Right. But he's eventually been able to grow a company right. such that he can send his team. Correct. See, now then, that business has legs. Correct. But if you're still the camera guy till today, yep. then there's something wrong. We are, we are not growing structure. in that yeah, case. So what's the growth? Right. So my, my, my last two minutes are at this. Looking at all the people that you've assisted in terms of building their enterprises and all. Mm -hmm. What are the two core, two or three things that you mm -hmm. think are the most important things that you'd want to pass the message to them? And just say, man, you've got to keep your eye on this. Okay. Um, I think the two most important, first is consistency. Consistency. That's staying power. Right. Um, staying power, keeping at it, reinventing. Right. We're now in COVID. Right. What are you doing to change? Correct. What are you doing different? Right. So that consistency and that staying power. And right. I, I'd like to say, in fact, my brother said it, he said entrepreneurship is a calling. Right. 
not everybody has that staying power. Correct. Um, and if you have that character in you, and if you have, if you're capable, even when naysayers, you come to Olive, she refuses to give you money. You go to Dennis, refuses to give you money. Will you still keep at you it? You keep at it. Yes. Right. Because then once we, and that's, you know, for me, I think that's been my secret to success. I've right. kept at it. Right. Guys have thought I'm crazy and yep. I'm like, it's okay. You want to go? You go. You go. Me, you'll find me here. Yeah, I'm my still thing. doing my thing. Yeah, I'm still here. Right. Right. Um, so I think consistency and A couple of years power. later, we can still bank on you for our image consultants. Exactly. Correct. There you go. Yeah. Um, so consistency right. and doing something that you're passionate about. Right. Because again, that will give you that stay in power. Right. Um, so for me, I'm passionate about helping people. Right. Um, I'm passionate about you know communicating and passing on messages and right. personal development. Right. Right. So because that's what sort of makes me wake up in the morning, then right. I can keep at it. Just regardless. gives you that kick. Exactly. Right. You know they say that thing that you can do for free. Right. Do that thing and yes. then find a way to monetize commercialize it, it and right. commercialize right. it right. exactly. Right. So those right. are my two right. things. Of course, I wouldn't let you go uh -huh. without telling us about the woodpecker story. <laughs> <laughs> and the hummingbird story, man. I always find that analogy very powerful. Thank you. I need to find out where I got that analogy from so I can give them credit. <laughs> um, so, no, the woodpecker and the hummingbird is about the consistency right. um, thing. So, it's really a woodpecker can drill a hole in a tree right. and it's this big. But that's because it keeps hitting at the same point over and over and over again until, right. it, gets, until it gets through. Right. Well, a hummingbird is sort of all over the place. Right. So, as a business owner, yep. do you want to become a woodpecker? or a hummingbird. Consistency. And, and, and I think that's an amazing place to end it out, man. I, I don't know whether you want to just give us a parting show because I think that's a very powerful place to end it out. Oh, no, I think we can. <laughs> I think we can leave it there. Um, yeah. There we go, man. I think powerful analogy. The question is, are you a woodpecker where your dreams are concerned or are you a hummingbird? I think that's an amazing story. I mean, a woodpecker would keep pecking on at it until we make the hole in a tree. A, wood, a, a hummingbird is all over the place. Which one are you going to be? I can tell you in the journey of your greatness, I suspect being a woodpecker would be a good example for you just to take it up. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. And uh, I, I don't know where time went, man, but uh, that's just about all the time we had for. That's about all the time we had for uh, on this show. Let us know what you picked out of this conversation. Let us know your two uh, points. Let us know your three points. What did you take away? What can you apply into your own journey to make your journey an absolutely amazing journey? I remind you, please follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, and also on Instagram on the Goldmine Show and share with a friend let a friend know tell a friend to tell a friend all right until next time god bless you thank you this has been the gold mine keep fighting the battle of your greatness